Hey, Tony, good to see you. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm good. Thanks. Um, I, I, I wondered, first of all, uh, as you as you go to, to Maryland, I know you played there back at 03. You guys had a lead in the in the second half um, when you're at George Mason. What 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 sort of memories are going to come through your head as you go in that gym and head back to you know, that area of the country? That's obviously so meaningful to you. Oh, man, you took it back. <laughs> you took it back 19 years, man. <laughs> I, I, I take it back to um, when I was at Seton Hall, we had an, a home and away actually with them in the first meeting. Um, we actually beat them on their home floor. Um, so that that experience and, you know, that atmosphere from what I remember is definitely high level and a lot different from the sideline of when I was playing back in 03 when I was a, I was a baby, man. That was my first year playing at the Division One level. But, um, you know, it's a different type of team, obviously a completely different type of team that I'm coaching with now. Um, given where we're at, you know, I'm excited, but, you know, my antennas are completely, uh, completely different from 19 years ago. But well, what is it like, or what, what does it mean for you to to go back to home, basically? So, you know, to go back to that that area that has been such a big part of your life, like what, what will it be like for you to go back there wearing Ohio State clothes? Oh, uh, man, it's, uh, it's, you know, everything comes back full circle, man, just from a personal level. Um, Growing up in the D.C. area, I grew up in two different neighborhoods, one being maybe not even 10 minutes away from that campus um, and then the other being about 20 minutes. So, you know, I grew up I grew up a Georgetown Hoyas fan, but at heart, I was also a Terp fan. You just couldn't say that out loud back in the day, um, you know, but I wasn't good enough to uh, uh, play at Maryland, apparently. So for me as a player, it was always one of those, you know, kind of chip on the shoulder whenever I went back. I wanted to beat them and that doesn't change tonight. Uh, Colin, you got anything? Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm just curious about how you know four games in the final week, um, and and if you're counting Sunday, and I guess where where's the head out of this program? I mean, there's a lot to play for, um, as well as just a lot of games left <laughs> um, in in this final stretch. How are you guys feeling? How what's kind of like the the atmosphere surrounding this locker room heading into the final week of the regular season? I think I think we're in a good place. You know, it's come down to that part of the season where, you know, everybody's on edge. Everybody's trying to put it together. Everybody's trying to win games. Um, and when you go on the road and beat a good Illinois team like we did, did the other night, um, I think our guys are in a good place. You know, as long as long as we kind of stick to being who we are um, when we're tough and we finish our possessions, um, we're a tough team to beat. And I think we showed that the other night with the resilience of that type of atmosphere. So. I'd say our guys are in pretty good place, but at the same time, just taking it one game at a uh, one game at a time. It's going to come at us pretty fast here, but uh, with a week left in in regular season, I think you know everybody in the country is pretty much faced with this type of adversity. But I think we're in a good place. And I know, I mean, you know, there was a lot going on with EJ over the past week, and and I mean, he showed up uh, against Illinois at points. I'm I'm just curious to see how he's feeling, how he's doing heading into this game against Maryland and I guess heading into this final week. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we put a lot, we put a lot on EJ and um, given his performance the other night when I think he was definitely, um, you know, not feeling himself, he, he's feeling a lot better 48 hours later. So I expect the, you know, the, the normal EJ that, you know, we're so used to, uh, we're so used to watching. Thank you. Jared Smalley, go ahead. Hi, Tony. A question for you about Malachi with his performance of late, uh, the the emergence, the uh, the national recognition people are, are understanding his talent level. I'm wondering in your locker room, has it changed anything, his emergence here lately and the way that you might try to play in the future? Is there something schematically that might evolve with his emergence and the way that he's been able to command games? Yeah, I mean, I think if you watch us as of late, man, I mean, it's it's um you know, obviously EJ is going to be EJ, but we've, we've been riding the back of Malachi now for several, several, I would say several games. I don't think anything changes for us schematically. We just got to continue to just kind of be who we are uh, with the leadership of obviously EJ and, um, you know, you know, I guess you call, call him the Robin of our team um, and the freshman Malachi. He's been playing extremely well um, and especially road games, man, different guys are going to be able to step up and um, kind of contribute. So I expect that from us, um, you know, as a, as a group, for sure, that the uh, the growth that we're watching with Malachi, man, it's not a secret that, 
you know, teams are going to try to come out and, you know, go after him defensively. But, um, you know, he's a good kid. He works, he watches film. And so I expect um, I expect him to, you know, be the best version of himself as well going on the road to uh, Maryland. All right, thanks. We'll go Spencer Holbrook and then Steve Hellwagon. Spencer. Tony, when you look at the roster right now and the way that these guys are kind of locking in and not really thinking about, you know, what's ahead um, with four games left, you guys are right in contention for a Big Ten title, but you don't seem to be really worried about that. And EJ even mentioned that Chris said that, you know, talked about Maryland in the immediate aftermath of a huge win on the road. Like, what does that say about your bunch that you guys can kind of lock in and not really focus on, you know, the big picture right now? You're just taking it day by day. Yeah, I think, I, I think you know, again, with our leadership, these guys have been, they've been, you know, in these situations before. Um, and as tough as the Big Ten is, you can only take it one game at a time. You can't think too far ahead. Um, and when you look at this Maryland team, I mean, their, their record doesn't justify the talent that they have. Um, you know, one through five, they're a talented group and guys that can score and hurt you in different ways. And, you know, they've obviously had some adversity um, hit them early. But, you know, we expect as a staff and our players expect, you know, a typical Big Ten battle and just, you know, kind of keeping the main thing the main thing, which is just one game at a time. What is it, uh, I guess, the final road game of the season? Is there something uh, a little relieving about this being the last one and you kind of get to wrap everything up at home? No, I, I don't think there's any type of relief right now <laughs> at the end of February. Um, it's definitely for us, you know, the way that our schedules kind of just got flip-flopped. Um, I don't even know if these guys realize how fast of a turnaround that we're going to have. You know, we'll go to Maryland, you know, obviously play them tomorrow turn around and play Nebraska on, on Tuesday, turn around and play um, Michigan State on, on Thursday, and then the same thing on Sunday. So when you're, when you're in the thick of things like that, I don't even think that you're actually thinking about it until the game in front of you is actually over. So um, it's that time of the year, though, man. So, you know, we're excited as a staff, and so, you know, so are our players. All right, we'll go Steve Hellwagon, then Adam Jardy. Steve. Yeah, Coach. Uh, question I have is it seems like uh, most of your preparation at this point would be mental with uh, going from one game right into the next one so soon. Just uh, how are you balancing still getting what you need to get on the practice court day in and day out with being fresh and being ready to play these games? Because it, it this is like an NBA schedule you guys are playing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Coach Holtman and, you know, the rest of our staff this time of the year, preparation is obviously just as important um, as being, you know, the most best, you know, the the best rested team. Um, you get down a stretch, like you said, it's just more mental. Um, it's more just diving into the personnel of the other team. Um, our game plan doesn't change. Um, we're in as good of a shape as we're gonna be. So getting up and down for two hours, like, you know, maybe some teams are, are doing this time of the year is not necessarily the answer, but um, you know, we've done a pretty good job with our guys and just letting them um, find a balance of what they need to do. You know, when we do come back from a short turnaround, um, from a mental standpoint, watching film, diving into the schematics of um, our opponent, um, but also just keeping them fresh because um, we know that at the end of the day, um, the healthiest team and the freshest team is going to go out there and compete the best. Yeah, I want to ask about that second half that Malachi had. I, I don't believe he missed a shot. Uh, from the floor or the free throw line and even made a had a three pointer in there somewhere. Have you seen a, a player, regardless of class, have a, uh, a, 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 a half like that? And just what how remarkable was that for him and on a, in a road environment to have the ball in his hands and and just put him put himself. He was scoring at all three levels. Just what uh, what would you see, I guess? What would you take from that performance? Yeah, I, I think the most. Um... The one thing that I can just say about him and, you know, just watching guys over the years, even as a player, I mean, his his poise when he's doing it, it's it's unreal. Um, it's one of those things where you look at the uh, you look at the box score at the end of the game and, you know, he had a, a pretty good game, but you don't think that he had 30 because he's just doing it in just such a smooth, in such a smooth way. Um, and so it's it's been exciting to have a chance to coach him, to watch him just continue to develop. Um, as a, as a freshman, it's not, it's a very, very difficult thing to do night in, night out, especially down the crunch. Um, and he's been, I mean, he's been remarkable. He's, uh, he stepped up to the plate and he's just doing everything that you can ask for a freshman. And, um, it's, it's, it's exciting to just know that you're going into these games, um, with that type of talent. 
Thanks a lot. Uh, go ahead, Adam. Tony, when you uh, when you come in to the to the staff and you're you're the new guy and you're getting your your feet wet and everything, and suddenly there's a need for a guard and and you lead into a Cedric Russell, um, and he goes through some some tough moments in in the early part of the season there, trying to acclimate to the level. What, what is that like for you as as the coach, as as the guy who kind of helped bring him in, knowing that there's there's better basketball ahead of him, um, but also knowing that like you're you know you're you want to show the staff that like you're, you know, you're contributing, you're, you're bring you, you can bring guys in as well. Like what, what is that like for you working with that, with a guy like that, helping him get to where he's got this role that he's got now where he's making significant contributions for you? Yeah, I think it's, um you know, we use the word, the word resiliency so much. And I just think um, that's just a big part of what it is for Cedric Russell. Um, you know, he's proven that he can obviously play. Um, and, you know, when you transfer to, a higher level, everybody's expecting you to do the same thing that you did at a previous level. But if you know, if you know basketball, you, you know how hard that transition can be. Um, but he's just had the right mental space all season um, and just staying ready. You know, he's he's out there competing in practice. It's not as if he's dog in practice. He's doing his job on, in, in practice at, as a staff. You know, we're giving him the confidence and putting him in situations. And I think that you've seen um, when given an opportunity um, you know, he's done, he's done his part and you don't do that. You know, it's, it's very, very hard to be able to turn that on. Not a lot of people can turn that on. So it just kind of shows that he's had the resilience and he's been doing his part in practice and just staying ready. You know, we've had to call on different guys through the course of the season and a bunch of different guys have helped us win games. And, um, you know, he's no short of that conversation as well. And I'm sure, I mean, you're, you're proud of any guy that steps up into a situation. You're rooting for every guy on the roster. But when it is a guy that you've brought in and, and you're the new guy on the staff, does that add anything to you? Do you feel any extra satisfaction or pride in that you helped bring this guy here? Uh, I mean, I, I would say, yeah, no. You know, when a guy makes a shot, it's a big time shot. I mean, it's all the same at the end of the day. I, you know, I don't care if it's uh, if it's Malachi, if it's EJ, if it's Cedric Russell, if it's, you know, Harrison Hookfin. I just want to win. Um, and, you know, just to kind of see the, the, the work that those guys put in at the end of the day, it's all about the W's on the, on the scorecard at the end of the game. So. Thank you. All right. I think the only one we haven't gotten is Griffin. Griffin, you got a question or. If not, I guess we'll, uh, nobody else got anything. Tony, appreciate your time. Well, good. Okay. Thanks a lot. All right. Good Appreciate luck. you guys, Everybody man. Thank you. you.